When our son was born, my husband and I bought our first new car. We wanted something safe, and we wanted it to last. So we did our research on Consumer Reports, where you can find information about how spe specific cars are operating after 10 or more years on the road. We bought a Honda minivan. And nearly 17 years later, our beloved minivan is still getting us to work and soccer games and camping trips. But what if, instead of a car, I wanted to invest in a water system for someone in Africa? Where could I find reliability information about that? Could I guarantee that the water system would last at least as long as my minivan? The answer is, unfortunately, no. We have more information and consumer reporting about a $20,000 car or even a $10 pair of shoes than we do about a $10 billion annual industry. It's time that we implement a oversight and accountability into what is arguably one of the world's greatest problems. Reliability in the water sector is a huge challenge and has been for the past three decades. It's estimated that 35 to 50 percent of water projects built in poor communities will stop working after just two to five years. Anyone who buys a new car expects it to last longer than two years, but almost half of the time, water systems will fail when they are almost brand new. And I think that there are two main reasons why. One, donors have no independent information about water system reliability. And two, water systems are not being designed to meet the needs of the users. When buying a car, none of us would rely completely on information provided by the car salesman. The lack of independent information in the water sector means that organizations that have the best marketing or the best connections, but not necessarily the best track record, are selling the most cars. About $10 billion is spent on water projects worldwide, so that means if half of these projects are failing, a whopping $5 billion in humanitarian aid is wasted each year. And it's women and girls who pay the highest price. One of them is Mari Tuji. Born and raised in the rural farming village called Kalecho Gerbi, Ethiopia, Mari was 22 years old and the mother of three young children when I met her in 2010. At 5 a.m., Mari is a, was the first in her household to wake up. She would nurse her infant son and then prepare breakfast for her family. Around 6 a.m., Mari would put her two-year-old on her hip, strap an empty plastic container on her back, and begin the walk to collect water, a journey that would take them four hours to complete. When we reached the water source, it broke my heart. Cattle and goats were there to drink to their feces, covered the ground of the riverbank, and Mari waded into the muddy river along with the other women to fill her container. She bent over deeply to hoist the heavy 40-pound vessel onto her back and then made the two-hour hike back home. Mari is illiterate. After attending about a month of school when she was six years old, she had to drop out in order to help her mother carry water. And one of Mari's children died from diarrhea. Mari's story is not exceptional, it's not extraordinary, and it plays out daily in poor communities across the globe. And the cost to society is staggering. Between two and five million people, mainly children under the age of five, die each year. It's estimated that the poor of the world spend $30 billion annually on the treatment of preventable water-related illnesses. About 90% of water collection in sub-Saharan Africa is performed by females, a task so grueling that it leaves sores on their back and they suffer from chronic back pain. About 100 million children worldwide, mostly girls, receive no education at all, mainly because they are expected to carry water. It's no wonder, then, that two-thirds of illiterate adults in poor countries are female. Seeing Mari's horrific water source 
The solution seems so obvious. She needs clean water, and many projects intended to solve problems like Mari's use a simple hand pump. But if Mari could talk to the designers of a new water system for her community, she would want them to also consider her time and her burden. And she would tell them that her biggest problem is that the water is too far away and she cannot possibly carry enough home to meet her family's needs. Mari actually needs two things. She needs clean water and convenient water. Drinking water that's free from bacteria is something that we all know is important. Water provides even more important barriers against illness when we use it for hygiene, hand washing, food preparation, bathing. Human beings need about 15 gallons of water a day for these activities. So if a hand pump is installed that provides clean water, but it still takes someone hours to collect a few gallons, then there won't be enough water available for good hygiene. It's important to understand the complete problem. This is not just about clean water. It's about one gender being treated like pack animals. It's about education, nutrition, household income, and unlocking human potential. But this is simply outlining the problem, and what I really want to talk about today is a solution. So not all water systems that are built to help families like Mari's provide the same value or service, just like not all cars do. When we buy a new car, we value it for many things. It needs to run and drive. Uh, we also want good gas mileage, high safety ratings, room for kids and the dog. In other words, a go-kart is not the same as a minivan, even though they both run and drive. And a hand pump is not the same as a piped water system. A hand pump typically addresses just one piece of the public health equation, clean water. Convenient water, which allows us to use more water by putting faucets where we cook, where we use the toilet, where we bathe, is not achieved with a hand pump. On a recent visit to a community called Tutukunche, Ethiopia, I talked with women who were waiting in line to fill their containers at a new water system. And the water system consisted of a concrete tank that was built to protect and store water from a local, sp local spring. And the water that they were collecting was clean. But there was just one faucet for filling containers. Residents of Tutukunche walked up to two hours to reach that faucet, and then there was a two-hour long line that they had to wait in to fill their containers. So households were just making one trip a day. The result was, on average, people in Tutukunche were surviving on less than one gallon of clean water a day. People in Tutukunche had clean water, they didn't have convenient water. They had enough water for drinking, but not enough water for everything else. Any project that provides clean water but doesn't provide more water is an incomplete solution, and it totally ignores the gender equality and productivity issues that are actually the highest priority issues for mothers like Mari. Not surprisingly, consumer satisfaction with projects that don't make the task of water collection easy is quite low, and this has a domino effect. When consumer satisfaction is low, people stop using a water system, they stop paying a water bill, and then when something breaks, there's no money available and no motivation to fix it. I had a car once that I disliked so much that when it needed a major repair, I just bought a completely different car. But the Mari 2Gs of the world cannot buy a new car to replace a lemon. They are stuck with a failed project. Now, despite knowing that water projects have a very high likelihood for failure, less than 1% of water systems receive any long-term monitoring. And because that information does not get back to donors, organizations that build projects that fail are not incentivized to do a better job. If a million people bought Chevys that were defective, word would get out. We'd stop buying them. 
And Chevy would either go out of business or they would make adjustments to the design of a car. Water flowing out of a faucet is very uncommon in rural Africa. Less than 10% of rural households in Africa have piped water on their premises. In Ethiopia, it's less than 1%. But hand pumps are ubiquitous. There are more than a million of them on the African continent. Many are non-functional. And I believe this is because hand pumps do not solve the problem. So when they break, people don't bother to fix them. This is why the water sector needs to start providing independent third-party information on water system reliability. Much like Consumer Reports provides reliability information on a car's engine and brakes and transmission, independent evaluators can visit water systems and collect important information on variables like functionality. Is the water project working? Water quality? Is the water free from bacteria and other contaminants? Level of service. How long does it take for one person to collect 15 gallons of water? And consumer satisfaction. Do people like the water system? Are they paying a water bill? There are many benefits to providing this kind of oversight. Donors would have valuable information that they can use to target their funding towards organizations that have the best track records. This action will then incentivize organizations who build water projects to do a better job, to, to actually build projects that meet the highest priority needs of the users. Said another way, project failures and poor ratings will begin to impact an organization's bottom line as they should. And more importantly, people who need clean water will have projects that last. In 2013, I attended the ribbon cutting ceremony for a new water system in Mari Tuji's community. Mari serves on the water system management committee responsible for operation and maintenance of the new water system, and her daughters are witnesses to this new role model of female leadership. Now that they aren't carrying water, Mari is determined that her daughters will complete their education, that they will be literate. Since the water system was completed, Mari's children have not been ill. And with the money that they've saved on medical expenses, Mari and her husband bought two new oxen that are helping with their plowing. All of these benefits from a water system that was well-designed and provided a complete solution with clean water and convenient water. With oversight and accountability, we can double the impact of successful projects like Mari's by preventing project failures. An additional $5 billion each year could be invested in projects that transform lives, especially for women and girls. Mari's story is not everyone's story, but it could be. Thank you. <laughs>